I'm Isaac. I'm Taylor. And I'm Zach. And, and we're Hanson. And you're watching Noise 11. Well, welcome to Noise 11. We are here with Isaac, Zach, and Taylor. Hanson. You know them as Hanson. Welcome, boys. Thank Hello. you. Thank you. All right. Before we get on to uh, the new studio album, shout out, let's just mm-hmm. get the Mbop question out of the way. Is, oh, this is like, there only one? Yeah, there's only one. Huh, I didn't know. But there was officially just one. There's an Mbop question. Yeah, it sounded yeah. like, you know, it, it sounded like, you know. The official. Some, you know, some sort of theory of relativity, you know. Like, let's talk <laughs> about <laughs> the, the theory. The Mbop. I thought that you would have, have you, you probably have a suite of them that you've been asked over the years. Yeah. I'm just no. It's only the one that you're about to ask. <laughs> okay. So, is it an albatross around your neck? Um, no. no. But that question is because for some reason I, it must be that every other band feels that way. I mean, we love that song. It's a song we wrote when we were kids. It's a song. Um, you know, it doesn't perfectly represent the band right now, but um, it's part of our story. It's part of who we are. It's not something that we've ever tried to really run away Didn't from. Didn't you resent it at any point? Well, it's not really. I mean, no. it would be like resenting your arm. You know what I mean? You know, damn you for being right. Uh. Um, I think, honestly, I think, I, I hate to say it this way, but I think it actually says more about the people who are looking at us from the outside than it does about us. Yeah. Which is that people feel so conscious about whether or not they do or do not like umbop. Yeah. Versus right. us, I mean, you know. It's a song that we wrote. It's a song, it was the first song that introduced us to most fans. I mean, one of the biggest things that we think of when we're doing records and doing shows is yeah. the the idea of being a music fan, you know? And when you're a fan of somebody, um, you have a connection with their music. And if you go out there and want to hear a song that, you know, was the first song you ever heard from somebody and they treat it like, oh, well, this is the song, we you know, mm. then then you kind of feel like in a way that they're that they're sort of looking at you in a, in a way that you don't respect you know, the yeah. fan. They're going, well, like, I like the song, so what's wrong with it? So, Please I mean, tell me you play it love first, it. and then you just... No, we play it Because that would absolutely just clear the room. You got to play no. it first. Okay, now, who's serious no, about No, we're us? proud of it. We're proud of it. <laughs> it's a song we wrote, you know, when I was 10. I mean, what are most people doing at 10? So. Well, what are most people doing at 10? <laughs> I wasn't not. doing what you were doing at yeah. 10. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, you're up to... Is, I, I read that this was the ninth studio album. That can't be right. Uh, ninth the, album. It's not... We've put, out, we've put out live albums and compilations, yeah. but it's actually the fifth studio album. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And the last one, The Walk, was a little bit, uh, a bit of a downer. This one's a lot more joyful and peppy. Yeah, it I'm is a, a little bit more peppy. Let, let, I mean, I don't, In some form. Still, I wouldn't say it's a down. I mean, the walk was the walk was highly influenced by a trip we took to Africa and a lot of time and kind of began a whole mission to engage people in a in a nonprofit. Uh, to raise money for in really some weird happen. way almost by accident because we were going to that record not necessarily thinking that that was going to be the mission of the record but it, but we took a trip to Africa and ultimately it just kind of stuck on our right. head it changed the, the course we, just, we had to yeah, yeah we, had, we had to do something about the fact that we'd been there and felt like there were things we could do and positive you know ways that we could affect the situation for people HIV AIDS poverty relief and, and getting people engaged in and education in that that aspect of the condition in South Africa specifically but um, anyway Shattered Out is I probably it's probably the of all the records we've made it's the most cohesive record I mean from the beginning to end yeah. um, most of it was recorded kind of live off the floor because the way we record a lot of the um, records these days is the way you know 1960s and 50s records were made where you begin with this kind of basic core track you know you got the bass the drums the guitar um, in fact, a couple of the, even the lead vocals were done on the floor and we finished the take and wow, that's great, done. Um, yeah. So it feel, it has a feel to it. And, and we always have talked about kind of soul music, rock and roll, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, and that comes through, I think, more on this record than ever. Yeah, I like this soul music, rock and roll, because you were saying you loved Otis Redding as much as you loved ACDC. Mm-hmm. Oh, is there an ACDC <laughs> yeah, song on your set? Huh? Uh, we love ACDC. Okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. High voltage, high voltage. I'm convinced that I'm going to get my son playing guitar to high voltage because that's like one of those records that it it's such a great record to learn to play guitar on because so many of the songs are just very accessible as a like beginning guitar player, mm. but it's all about delivery. And then of course all of the great solos and all the just I mean, you know, and it's got a song called "She's Got Balls." <laughs> on it so I mean apparently they didn't have an anatomy of course in, in high school but uh, yeah but you it's know not the only school that wrote about balls too <laughs> <laughs> no exactly <laughs> she's got them it's a good one. she's got just, balls yeah. anyway anyway we love ACDC so yeah. much attitude it's yeah. hard it's hard not to love I mean obviously ACDC but they 
I mean, they made a career out of playing three chords, like and rock and, and you're, roll. you're just like, this is amazing. Yeah, yeah, nobody does it better. Yeah, did you want to simplify a bit on this album as well? Because you did go back to the gospel and soul and the classic yeah. stuff and blues. I mean, ACDC well, are effectively I, yeah. a blues general, band. Yeah. yeah, they are effectively very much a blues band. Yeah. In general, this record, um, like Tay was talking about, you know, playing it off the floor. I think that was a big part of simplifying. When you when you choose to to do all the pre-production and play it live together, you inherently uh, take out some of the bells and whistles and focus a little more on the core parts. And I, I think one thing and making the parts really work. Well, yeah, together. I, I, I hope. I, I think maybe one difference about the way we play um, these days versus you know, years ago is um, you know you're playing a little more to find the smallest part, the 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 core of the part, rather than trying to play as well as you can. You know, at some point when you're learning to play an instrument, you're like, I just want to play the coolest thing or the best thing I can. And then at some point you realize, no, I just need to play really as little as I can while getting the message or the feeling across. Well, and also there's sometimes, especially, you know, and, and of course it depends from song to song, but there is also a tendency um, as a songwriter to, when you're not playing it in the band environment, to kind of start things off more from the songwriter point of view, like, okay, I'm just going to like, you know, play this acoustic guitar down or play this like primary piano part down in this kind of I'm the band kind of way. But when you actually arrange it as the, as you know, the trio or as the full kind of you know five piece band well, or something like that. Spaces yeah, you have to leave space because, you know. And this was the idea I read that you were trying to write classic songs. Well, I mean, you're never going in there to write records that you think will be of only of a moment. Yeah, I mean, you, yeah, you yeah. go in to write records that you think are good enough to still be good years down the line. I mean, you yeah. want people to listen back to a record and have it not be something that was, you know, a hit at that year or whatever and go back to it and still go, wow, that's a great record. I love this song. I mean, it's just, I mean, to us, that's really kind of a given, you know, hmm. try yeah. and write a record that lasts. Yeah, but, uh, but you don't sit around going, now we're writing classics, done. Wrote yeah, a classic. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you, you, you basically an, just an try and set a bar that's high, you know. Yeah. An extension of that is, is maybe more the fact that I think we've never been a band, um, particularly of a time. We're never trendy. They, so, you know, yeah. even yeah. when you listen to Umbop and you compare it to what was hits around that time period, um, you've got on one side sort of grunge and Nirvana and um, you know maybe Silver Chair and kind of that is over here. And then you've got on the other side the Spice Girls and Britney Spears and kind sort of, of Euro pop. pop. Mm -hmm. And that record is some crazy amalgamation of you know sort of fifties and sixties. You know Jackson Five yeah. and doo wop mm -hmm. records and a garage band and some drum just, loops underneath it. You know like we don't sound like <laughs> Hoodie and the Blowfish. Nope. But we also <laughs> don't sound like, you know, the Macarena, I don't think. Yeah, yeah. I, I hope not. It's somewhere in the <laughs> yeah. Well, so you're, you're dropping names like in the Blowfish. You know, things, very, saying, yeah, the time no, things very off their time. Yeah. And you guys were invited and did uh, Katy Perry's video. Oh, yeah. Yes. Now, I, I thought, oh, this is great. And I saw it and went, that's great. Oh, but there's... Kenny G and, <laughs> and I kind of thought are you guys being picked as a joke for that uh, was that the idea because well, you know, everyone seemed like everyone else was picked for a joke um, well you know what Katy Perry's uh, video was meant to have people of a certain era yeah. and so yeah we first came out in that area and she was depicting a some kind of strange uh, yeah. combination of 80s 90s you know something but yeah. I mean honestly it was one of the things you just didn't take that seriously and as far as like overthinking it and said, hey, this is awesome. Katy yeah. Perry's, you know, will blowing say, up and she, and she showed yeah. a genuine, you know, interest in the band and was, and said, of course, yeah. And I saw she owes you one now, doesn't she? I, I don't think we'd look at it that way. Yeah. But, <laughs> oh, you've got to get her in as a love interest for a video. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, we'll, we'll see. Maybe. Who's, Maybe. Who's love interest? Yes, Who gets yeah, her? If we're spacemen at some point. Mm -hmm. She seems to be into like the space... Kind of, I think she's had some space themes. The floating the space. spandex. Even the spandex yeah. feels kind of blue, spacey. Blue colors, hair. You know. Yeah, if you've got yeah. four or five albums, you've got to do a concept record. Everyone else is doing one. Mm. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. It is Our best. next one is going to be just She's Got Balls, the <laughs> concept record. <laughs> the documentary. Yeah. The documentary. <laughs> you could write a it's concept record. It's kind of a hermaphrodite kind of <laughs> documentary. <laughs> wow. Sounds, Featuring really? Gaga. <laughs> yeah, it's I, just weird. I don't feel you could do it, but you do write um, 
you know, these sort of romantic songs and songs about love, but you're all married. How do you, that must be a very different way of writing those sort of songs. <laughs> there is a, there, <laughs> there's there a is, really funny in, joke in, in there. In some in some marriages, there is, is still love. romance. Oh God, it's no. possible. <laughs> um, no, it, it's hard to find. Um, it's very rare. You know, when um, when I'm not you know doing errands and doing the honeydew list, about one percent of the time romance. I've been married, there's some romance in there. You know, it is a different perspective. I think you see that. And usually in, it's about in, loss and heartbreak. And lots well, of you guys don't I, have any I heartbreak. I think that also in marriage, there is loss and heartbreak. <laughs> You've obviously never been married. <laughs> no, no. Um, you know, that's, that's uh, you, you know, know like anything, they, this is the job of, of playing music. Any kind, Anybody that's an artist of any kind, your job is to just to look around the world and whatever you sing and, and interpret it through your songs. So yeah, yeah every day there's, there's heartbreak, there's... Yeah. Sadness, there's love, there's frustration, there's all of the above. I, so I that's, will say, that's what comes through in the music. And being yeah. married, I mean, it. Thankfully, we all have met amazing women. We've all had started families and stuff like that. But no one is immune to, you know, yeah. all of the everything that, yeah. that life brings. You know? I, I will say though that the, the, the songs, <laughs> the love songs on this record, are a little bit more. We're in a relationship and we're working through it. It's yeah, not so yeah. much like the. It's not so much like the. I see you from across the room. You know, kind of like, yeah. I hope you love me someday. So now it's like, I see you across the dishes and oh, come on. <laughs> it's like that just, was actually it, the exact it, it, lyric. Like, well, like, for instance, if I were here, I would say to you, I see you across the yacht. You oh, know, of course. Because kind of, you know, Ralph Lawrence, you stole his wardrobe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're a storyteller. I get it. Yeah, I get it's it. I get it. You're depicting. Yeah. All right. Finally, um, I want to ask you about how you kind of feel as pioneers, because as I was looking back in your... Uh, Bits and pieces, uh, bits and pieces in the career sort of points. I feel like you doing, you were doing things many, many years ago that people are kind of just cottoning onto in the music industry now. Yeah. Three years ago, you did that playing whole albums each night on tour, which now every band is doing. It does seem like that's happening more, yeah. Yeah, and the cultivation of a fan base. I mean, that's something that every young band now is being told to do. It's like you have to go out and speak to your fan base and connect mm. to them. You can't yeah. just rely on radio or something. You've got to actually. Which is kind of ironic, you have to admit, it's kind of ironic that people are being told that. Because that's like, you know, like when you're starting out as a band, that's like rule 101. Mm. You have to go out and play shows and like find fans. You you know, the thing about it is, um, I mean, there are definitely, you're right, you're seeing a pattern of of some of the things uh, that I think are necessary to sustain a career. Yeah. Um, as far as whether we... Because you can't put, sustain a career only on whether we've album put, sales or downloads or things like You know, that. on those things. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think there are a lot of things where we've been earlier, but it's really, to, it to me, it's more about... necessity, maybe? It's more about actually looking at... It, it's sort of like a really... Uh, I would say, hopefully we're maybe in this category, of being a better business owner than another. <laughs> You know, just you own a business and you go, let's see. And you're in touch with I'm a, I have a restaurant. Customer. And what do I need to do? What do I actually need to do to make this successful? And I think a lot of the, the whole music business, I mean, so much of it is, has been everybody's looking out for their own little bubble. Nobody's actually looking at the whole. And if you actually step back, it's not rocket science. It's like, okay, we have the internet. How can we stay connected? I mean, when we left our label, started our own label, we had something really unique, which was we actually owned our relationship with our fans. And now labels are trying to grab the ownership of the record of the merchandise and the tour and mm. the website. But for us, we never gave that stuff away. Always wrote the songs. Always owned the publishing. And so we could actually go. We could try the things uh, that that now have become more commonplace. Like, let's build. You know, let's actually build a community-based website. Let's try and make this a global website. Let's not make it something that. Let's actually kind of create a place for fans all over to have a little to connect with each other. Because hey, we're you know we're not doing something all the time night and day so you have to find a way really to make it bigger than you it's not just about the performance it's about figuring out how to get people to um, ultimately to connect with each other and build something that is kind of almost like its own little ecosystem it it, it breathes and it you know and, and you can feel you know, that with the, the how fervent your fans are they really feel connected to this group and an identity and a community about it which I think a lot well, of fans don't we tried to we've tried to cultivate it as best as we can you know the, the reality that we I mean well I guess cultivate is really even the wrong word it's really because we actually care that they are there and we yeah. actually want them to have a good experience and want to put for you know for lack of a better way to say it put their their passion first on some level or another when it comes to the shows and things like that. One can only take so much credit for it, realistically. Yeah. Uh, In the end, 
you make choices that are uh, the kind of choices you'd like to see as a fan. And I think that's yeah. all that we do. We go, I love this band or I love that band. What would I like to see them do? And those are the kind of things that we do because we go, that would be really cool. I want to go inside the studio. I want to see you know Bono and Edge write a song. I want to mm-hmm. see uh, Tom Petty you know play the whole you know Wildflowers album. I want you know and just I will let's say, do. It. We'll say one thing that is um, one thing that is very true about our choice and the business sort of structure of what we've done for almost 10 years we've been our own label and we've clearly not depended on radio we haven't depended on those as we haven't even depended on major television and things like that we really have depended on the idea uh, that of course hits you know you know tv big you know that's fantastic you go for it all you work on it but ultimately content great 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 content especially now lives on and it continues to reach more and more people as you do it. And stuff like doing live streaming events. Like when we launched the last album, we did this five night series. We mentioned the live albums. We did every album in a row. So each night was an album. And on the fifth night was the premiere of the new record. What was, you know, in that moment, we were only playing for what, you know, 1,500,000 a people in that room. But by sharing it and live streaming it and owning it, we had hundreds, and hundreds, of hundreds, you know, thousands of people watching. Yeah, yeah. Hundred countries watching. Even if it's two people in, you know, in the random country, you know, somewhere in Eastern Europe, or it's, you know, twenty people in Korea, you're you're finding a way to say, you know what, we're kind of all in this moment together. And really, that's all music is. Music is just, you know, it's it's just this this intangible thing that connects with people. You know, they just. I mean, nobody knows exactly where it is. You go to Africa, and in the tribal, you know, communities, they're still singing and dancing, even though they need water and food, but they still want to dance. And so sometimes they're dancing and singing to get water. And food, yeah, that's true. It's <laughs> all other thing. But it's, um, it's, about, it's just about figuring out a way yeah. to make a connection with people, and and so that's that. That's you just keep trying to come up with new things to work. I, I will say too, though, that also that event of doing the week long kind of concert event where we're playing album after album was also what part of what spawned us then going out and doing a tour the following year where we said okay here's one here's every record let people vote for vote every night yeah. uh, every night and then we'll play one of the 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 record that wins we'll play that record oh. in its entirety and then we'll play other stuff too and 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 it was a it was kind of a, it was almost almost kind of like a dare you know cuz we were like okay well we've worked all the records out now what can we do with this Hmm. The fans really enjoyed yeah, it. We'll they, practice at that point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, it that was. Is. It was kind of. I have to say, it was kind of ballsy. And there were a few like moments where you're like, "Oh, oh yeah. God, I can't believe we did was, this." There was definitely some oh shit moments. <laughs> but but it was actually really fun. And by the end of the tour, it was actually really exciting because it was so eclectic what we were playing from night to night. So yeah. it's fun. Oh. That sounds like it's all paying off. This is fantastic. Look, thank you again for coming back to Australia. Don't leave it for seven years next time. Yeah, we won't. <laughs> uh, and yeah, it's great to see you guys back here. Thank, thank you very much. Thanks.